Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, you may have wondered where this equation came from. That's the equation that we use to find the end term in a geometric series, uh, or sequence. Essentially, it's the same thing in a way, is to find the end term in that particular order of numbers. But with a geometric series, or with geometric sequence, we know that there's a common ratio between one term and the next term. In other words, what we can say is that a sub n divided by a sub n minus 1 is equal to the common ratio r. So that's what we need to do in order to figure out what the common ratio is. Once we know that and we know the first term in the sequence, we can find the nth term in the sequence. But again, where did that equation come from? Well, this is how it's done. First of all, we can say that a sub 1 is equal to a sub 1. That's simple enough. But what about a sub 2? The second term in the sequence, well, that's going to be equal to a sub 1 times the common ratio. So if the common ratio is 2, if the first number is 1, then 1 times 2 gives you the second number because you have to multiply the number before times the common ratio to get the next number. So what if we now get a sub 3? Well, that's going to be equal to a sub 2 times the common ratio. But a sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 times r, so this can be written as a sub 1 times r times r, or a sub 1 times r squared. Then a sub 4, that's going to be equal to a sub 3 times the common ratio r, and you begin to see the pattern. It's always the previous term times a common ratio. So this is going to be equal to a sub 1 times r squared times r, which is a sub 1 times r cubed. And doing one more, a sub 5 is equal to a sub 4 times the common ratio r. a sub 4 is equal to a sub 1 times r cubed times r, which is equal to a sub 1 times r to the fourth. Now, when we take a look at it, when n is equal to 5, a sub 5 is a sub 1 times r to the fourth. When n is equal to 4, you can see that a sub 4 is equal to a sub 1 times r to the third. Notice that the exponent of the common ratio is always one less than the value for n. And so therefore we can say that a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the exponent one less than n. And that is where this equation came from. Now that we know how we derived it, let's try it one more time on this example right here. Here, why is this a geometric sequence? Because the next number is a fixed ratio of the previous number. Let's see what that is equal to because we can do it using the equation. So we can say that r is equal to a sub n divided by a sub n minus 1. And so r is equal to take the second number, so a sub n, that would be 2 divided by the previous number, which is minus 4, which is minus 1 half. Notice here that the common ratio is a fraction and a negative number, a negative fraction. All right, now we're ready to find the four terms. So we say a sub 4 is equal to a sub 1, which is minus 4, multiplied times the common ratio, which is minus 1 half, raised to the 4 minus 1 power, 4 minus 1 power. So this is equal to minus 4 times minus 1 half raised to the third power, which is equal to minus 4 times minus 1 over 8, because negative 1 cubed is still negative 1, and 2 cubed is 8, and so minus times the minus is plus, and 4 divided by 8 is 1 half, so you can see that the fourth term is equal to 1 half. 1, 2, 3, 4, notice, yes indeed, I got the value I was looking for, and you can see that the equation does indeed work First you find the common ratio, then you plug it into the equation to get the n term of that particular sequence. And that is how it's done. That's not the equation to find all n terms in all geometric sequences. That's to find the nth term, any n term, any one particular term in the sequence. In any geometric sequence? Any geometric sequence, yeah. What's the challenge in that then? <laughs> it's not complicated enough? it's there that's how you do it yeah. 